Get over yours or this little bloody thing I made here works quite well. Got the ground for my horizontal vertical sink in there. Plugs in. Blue, green, red and signal yellow. All tie in there. I'm happy with that. I'm going to make some more of those. So those two monitors. Despite the uh, wear on this thing, it um, works quite well. Dim picture, so it's uh, the cathode's pretty much buggered. The cathode bloody uh, low emissions, so it's, it's a weak CRT basically. It's a 19 V or BP22 Taiwanese main CRT. If I could find another similar one, the same type, but a Japanese Hitachi or something that's in good nick. I'd love to get this bloody, uh, make this into a nice little TV project. Got to preserve some old CRT um, history. Can't let it all get, go forgotten. Anyway, I've got another idea here. I might have a good way I can EOL this uh, CRT. What I want to do, I want to first get rid of that white tape. I want to put a lot of coil around that. And induct, induction heat at my ZVS. Just inductive, uh, purely inductive here. I was going to do um, what my DAC 2007 done, just heat the glass up and short it, but nah. I think an induction heater is the best way to EOL this. Heat the whole electron gun up instead of just using the heaters. Even though that's not how valves work, but... An induct inductive heat will heat the whole thing up with glow red. And that might be more of an interesting EOL for this CRT. Yeah, I'm not going to use this for anything anyway, other than the EOL. And you can see there where they've welded it together. They make a gun assembly, and they roll it there. And the little seal, the pip at the back, because it a port of vacuum. I'll get that plastic off. I'll try and get this plastic off. Clean all this up, get rid of anything that's going to smoke and burn, and create hot spots of the glass. So I want to peel the heat, inductive heat, all that whole electron gun assembly. Just to see what happens. Oh, it's going to crack the glass, or it's just going to fall off in there. And I can get some um, exposed pins and get an arc in there. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'll get this prepared and see if I can, uh, see how well this is going to work out. It'd be interesting, the inductive heat or that. That'd be cool. Hey, cat. I've decided to use all its own winding here. Round, around, around, joined up and round back around its, its own winding. Let's see if this actually works out this way, if I round this actually correctly. Might have to cut it short yet and make my own separate coil and join it. But we'll see how it goes. So what I'm looking for here is, is a evenly distribute heat through that and inductive heat it. Cook some cathodes in the process. Rejuvenate in the CRT the lazy way. Now I've got to hook my driver up to it and see what happens. I've got to give it some bigger ferrite so if I care if the high voltage one rules one rules is great. I want something longer. I've got to put more of a winding on there and make a big ass bloody kick ass induction heater with it. Just for this sort of um, stuff. Because I think this one is a bit too small. But we'll see what happens. Okay, viewers, I gave it a bit of a try. And uh, after short, there's wires out. They're um, getting a bit wobbling, wobbling most of the power. And the primary and the fly back there is going to have to be replaced. Because that's uh, starting to melt itself together. That's an EO Robo ZBS if I don't change that. So I'm going to replace that winding on the um, induction heater with some of this capillary tube and just clamp it on the um, shorten that second area out cut it short and do it how I always did and use uh, this method to clamp this on probably a better more efficient way of doing it so we'll get some heavier wire and shorten that and that'll uh, deliver as much power to that little uh, induction heater transformer as we can it didn't work too well it doesn't work too well this way it was, wasn't getting warm enough in that uh, um, electron gun Confirmation, that's working very good as it is. That got quite hot there on that screwdriver. So it's working okay, it's just taking fair the heat the CRT gun assembly up. Because of how it's designed, it's actually like an internal heat sink. So it's gonna take a while, I think. Constant four amps though. Gotta keep an eye on that ferrite transformer and get too hot. You can hear it. Yeah, it's getting too hot, see? Yeah, it's taking forever to heat that CIT neck up. That will take all day. 
bloody ferrets and then not the wiring before that goes um, warm in that CIT. Transformer is getting at a constant temperature, it's getting cooled by the wind. Yeah, he's going to tackle that. I hate this CRT um, gun assembly up. It's so bloody, um, it's like a heat sink in there. Uh, it's going to take all day, I think. Yeah, it's still pulling four amps. I'll get the safety glasses just for the rest of the safety board. Good safety measure. Well, CRT is always making bloody safety glasses with these things. I didn't cut the implosion band, so. Quick check. Yeah, we've got four amps still. It's a quick check. Things are okay here. No, that's not working. A bloody electron guard's acting like a heat sink. I burnt myself on a transformer though. Ooh, that metal tab on the end gets all the heat, but it's acting just as acting as a heat sink. That end tab on that um, ferrite transformer. Hmm, I might stick a heat sink on the bottom of that bloody um, ferrite core. That might help cool it a bit. But this CRT is taking a clever to cook. Nah, that's not very warm at all. Nah. Nah. I can't get enough heat in that electron gun, unfortunately. She isn't gonna work. Bugger. Oh damn, I burnt myself from that flyback big time. The clip on the end of that thing. It's a heat sink. It's all concentrated onto that. That's the main um, uh, bracket that's soldered onto the circuit board. It held the flyback in place, and that's actually acting as a heat sink. And that's, I went to throw the ferret cord, I touched the end of it on my finger, the uh, semi-sensitive part. Yow, that hurt. So I might have to redesign that um, ferret cord so that I can bolt a heat sink on the bottom of that. And the heat sink should take care of the um, ferret core heating up issue. Right, I'll remove that um, coil and just put some lead straight to the heater and just overvolt the heater with that ZVS um, induction heater transformer. It's not working out this way, cook that electron gun. I'm pretty excited off camera. I get 58 volts and a lot of colour out of this transformer. Not quite as much as I thought, but I just uh, have too much fun blue the heater off camera. So I get that back up and I'll sort these two out. Yep, 7 amps. And blue the heater up. Yep, go on, I'll blow it up. No heater. All fun's over. I'll try this um, one more time because I got a bit of that negative wire was a bit too long. I'll shorten that negative connection. We'll try the induction header trick again. There are too many long wires on the input. I get from about five amps now. Bit better, more improvement. It's not getting hot enough though. 
No. Bloody ferrite cores absorbing all the heat. Yeah, I gotta work on the um, cooling on that transformer. Yeah, I think I need it. It's stuck too much like a heat sink in there. Yeah, my specs are staying cold. I have to work on this a bit, I think. It's not working out. No, it's not working. Disconnect that. Yeah, it's about like cause in a few months. No, that's not getting very warm in there at all. Uh, what a bugger. This isn't working. Not working at all. Let's see if I get Mark in that bloody electron phone gun assembly. Focus camera, that's it. I'm not going to see much, unfortunately, because of the glare, but we'll see what happens. It's not that I'm shorting out that fiber yet, it's got a bit to go, I'll keep an eye on that. Oh. Too much wind. There's a knock in there. Oh, purple haze in the tube. Okay, disconnect. Put my safety glasses on. Dis uh, discharge. All right, just check the flow. Problem there. Capacitor is not too bad. Problem is not too bad. All right, get the safety glasses on here. Gotta be uh, safety first at all at all times. With, um, messing with CRTs, especially when it's still under vacuum. Ah, uh, bloody glare. Camera's a bit close to the subject. Let's see what happens. Let's see the um. Plasma effect now. Negative there. Positive on here. Look at that, the glow is on the tube. Getting hot in there. Disconnect. That's it. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm glad I'm holding up these flybacks. I just air rolled it. Damn it! Ha! Oh, I just air rolled my Samsung um, Optima PC one of the flyback. It picked its guts out. Yep, I just connected the ZVS just in time there. I was hoping that was a problem, but no. Nah. I just air rolled my flyback. Damn it. Whew, got hot in there, look at that. Things got hot in there. Yeah, look at that. We've got a good arc in there, that's for sure. That's one fried up electron gun. I will give you a close look at the flyback. I bloody air rolled it. I'm glad I'm collecting them up there. Yep. Flyback guts. That's the end of that Samsung flyback. I air rolled it. Oh. Bloody flyback revenge. It stung me, good and proper. I completely forgot about this internal capacitor, was still okay. Yeah, with the hand lit, they went put the finger across one of those two pins and yeah, it stung me good and proper. I got revenge from this Samsung flyback. It got me back from when I burnt it out. You can see it spat its guts out. I'm gonna try and cut this short here, down here as much as I can. Save this lead as it is with the anode cap intact. So I'm going to savage what I can off this thing, especially the ferrite core. Yeah. Alright, let's um, further investigate this thing. I'll uh, try and get this ferrite core off in one piece. There's a primary off that flyback. You can see lots of breaches in it, where well, it's virtually melted through. Yeah, it's not looking too good, that primary. That's one of the reasons why that could have happened to it. Could have momentarily shorted out, uh, winding would have momentarily shorted out. And that's fatal for transformers, so that could have been a problem as well, right at that pop. I'll right, try and slap that down below there. Recover as much of this cord as I can. I want to use this for another flyback. 
that lead and the anode cap. See if I could actually, actually I might have cut this video in half with a hacksaw. Expose some of the windings, see how they work. A bit of a tear down on it. That'd be a good idea. Get past this in here so I'll keep that bit. Yeah, we'll cut it with a hacksaw. Have a look at how much windings are in there. Be a good little uh, flyback um, autopsy. Well, hacked it apart. I'm surprised. There's not much copper in these at all. For the amount of copper winding in these modern flybacks, that's impressive the output gear to these things. Also, the main priming and filament winding in there. The thicker ones will be with the heavier duty windings. I think, like for the heater and the uh, 105 and 110 and 160 volt they had pins that went to uh, various parts of other uh, power supply and all that. And the whole on output. Well, this fine one looks like it's actually a band, a copper strap, not actually a remote form of wire. So you've got bits of plastic, they're your insulators with the windings around between them. So you've got a set of windings, insulator, winding, insulator, and layered like, um, like the old AC flybacks. They still use that method, but how they um, get the epoxy to uh, work so well on these and actually um, cover every single minute air gap in this thing is unbelievable. Be nice to get hold of some of this epoxy, really handy. You see, it's like just straight copper, all that outer winding, that most outer winding there you see is just all solid copper. That's the main high voltage winding. Bloody hair thin wire. So there's like a plastic form around that to insulate it. Then the most inner one would be probably be a, um, would be a primary, the internal primary actually. So you've got warning. The break, another warning, there's a break, another warning, there's a break, another warning, there's a break, another warning. The various parts of the circuitry inside the TV. But the main high voltage warning is here on the outside, the secondary. You just see how to, how to hold them in to get the epoxy so tightly packed in there. It's just almost like the copper warning is embedded in the plastic itself. That's unreal. See, that's the outer secondary on this side, and better tap, definitely better tap the high voltage secondary. That's the epoxy there that overheated and blew out. Interesting. Anyway, I'll salvage the rest of the goodies off this flyback. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.